Hi, I'm Henning from Frognoms.com, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about what I like to call tutorial hell. This is the stage of beginner's art when they're trying to learn 3D and they just keep watching tutorials all the time and you can't really break out of that. You want to do your own projects, but every time you open up a 3D software, it's intimidating, you're scared, and you just can't get yourself to do it. So instead, you keep watching tutorials. In this video, we're going to be talking about how you can break out of that. This is really important if you want to do your own things, right? Because you really have to get out of watching tutorials at some point. They're really useful when you're learning. And of course, they can be with you at all stages of learning. But at some point, you really need to spend a vast majority of your time on your own projects, exploring things yourself, and just having fun with 3D instead of just step-by-step -step following somebody else's tutorials. And this might sound weird coming from somebody who makes a living out of tutorials, but it's really important to acknowledge the place a tutorial will have in somebody's learning journey. So a core issue with being in tutorial health, just watching tutorials over and over again, is that you have the illusion of learning. You become book smart. You're not really street smart. You don't actually know how to do stuff yourselves. Instead, you just know all the theoretical steps, but turns out learning 3D is a lot more than just knowing which buttons to press. So how can we actually break that cycle? Well, for me, there were two main stages you need to get into when it comes to learning 3D. The first stage is you need to get familiar with the software, simply learning the tool and getting familiar with that. And the second stage is getting used to the actual workflows. At the core, the first stage is learning how to use the software and stage two is making something with the software. So when it comes to simply learning the software, obviously tutorials are great. We have plenty of tutorials on flipmomos.com. Like I made a bunch of them, like Intro to Maya, Intro to Substance Painter, Intro to Seabrush, all these kind of tutorials, and they're really useful. But I really find it to be very handy when I'm learning something myself to just dive into it, open up the software and just mess around with everything. I personally like to just press all the buttons. I go through all the menus and I just try like to explore and discover things. So why is this often better than watching an intro tutorial? Well, the reason is that you get an intuitive feeling for what the software is like. You're not just following something step by step, which can condition you to being more afraid of the different buttons. You're following something step by step, but now you're in a stage where you don't, if, if somebody hasn't told you all the buttons, you might be afraid of, of touching them or clicking them. But if you just get used to just messing around in the software, you know that you can't really mess up too much, right? You can always just reinstall it, absolute worst case, so you can reset your preferences, or in most cases, just reopen the software. Simply opening up and just playing around with it. You're not really trying to do anything specific. You're not trying to master the software. You're just getting a feel of the interface, getting a feel of what the general buttons do in the navigation. The reason this is important is because in order to do 3D with any kind of ease, you need to develop muscle memory. This is absolutely essential. You need to develop muscle memory for the most common features, the navigation and all other aspects of the software, because if you're going to make anything of importance, you can't have a pause when it comes to looking into how to make a cube or how to navigate. This is something that just has to go like that. You just need to instantly know how to do that. But this can, of course, be really overwhelming. If you're trying to just go into my or Blender Houdini, right, even worse, then, and you're just straight up trying to click on all the things, it's not really doable, right? Because there are just too many things. I still recommend playing around with these features, just go around and have fun with them. But at some point, you're it's just overwhelming. At some point, you just can't really do that anymore. So in that case, what I recommend doing is being more structured, being a bit more systematic about things and go through each menu just one by one. Of course, within a certain limit, you shouldn't have to go through every single one, but let's say you want to learn animation. You can go through all the different animation menus, just click them, have fun with them like that. And then maybe that's what you're doing for today. When I was learning Blender, I was very clearly using this approach. I, in the beginning, I was just messing around, trying to do, just do some simple projects and such. But then after some time, you just have to get a more in-depth understanding of things. So what I did is I had one day where I was like, today is UV mapping day. Next day, it's modifier stack day. Next is whatever it is, right? And just by doing that, I developed a really strong understanding of of how to use Blender. I'm currently learning Unreal Engine as well, which you'll probably see more of that on the channel soon. And the way I'm doing that is just kind of messing around in the software. Of course, 
tutorials very, very much have their place as well. Like this is really important. They did, they very much do have their place in, in learning. The place I think tutorials have is either just straight up an introduction series where you can just watch that and, and learn from that. But for me, it's more about if I get stuck, I like to watch tutorials. When I'm learning software, I'm Googling a lot. So I might be going in Unreal and I'm constantly searching, like how do I apply materials? How do I import meshes? How do I navigate and such? So I'm very much using learning resources, but it's on they're on my terms instead of a tutorial telling me what to do. But of course, once you know something to a certain degree, then it's really useful to watch tutorials as well, because then you'll have the instructor fill in a lot of blanks that you for sure will have, even if you've been reading the documentation. I like to read the documentation, it's really boring, but it's really useful. And they're just gonna connect dots that you haven't thought about connecting before, or even talking about hidden features that you had no idea about. So they're definitely really useful, but the core thing when it comes to learning the software for me is just, just mess around, explore and discover, and just have fun with it. and having fun with it is hard, right? Because it is legitimately difficult to do. It's it's frustrating learning new software, but having fun with it in the sense that it's kind of consequence free. You can really just mess around with it and nothing is going to happen. Like if you, if you open up some Substance Painter and you completely screw up everything, like worst case, you just reopen it, right? Like you cannot really cause any long lasting damage to this. So I think this is a really useful approach. Just get used to, to messing around with the software, build muscle memory, and just, just play around with things. Read the documentation, watch tutorials to fill in the blanks, but fundamentally you should be in charge of the learning process and um, not just blindly following a tutorial. Now, the second part of this is, of course, learning the workflow as well. This is really important. You have to learn how to actually use the tool. You can go through and clicking all the buttons, making all the cubes and cylinders and messing around with a graph editor all you want to. But at some point, you have to start actually building something as well. And this is where being project-based is legitimately really, really useful. So instead of just going through the menus and trying out all the things, at this point, you're trying to build something very simple. This can be trying to model something on your desk. Whenever I'm learning a new main 3D software, 3D Star Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Blender, whatever it is, I, I like to just try to model something simple. It doesn't have to be fancy. It's never going to be shown anywhere. This is purely to just get familiar with things, get familiar with the workflow. And the advantage of this method, of course, this is a second part, right? So this is not a different method. The advantage of this approach is that you get to connect the dots in a different way. So if you're building something, if you're doing a model, you have to first understand how the general polygonal modeling tools work. You have to understand how to subdivide something. Then you have to understand how to apply materials, maybe UV map it, and um, then setting up the lights and render it out and all that. And just by doing that, like a dead simple prop, like I like to do a Wacom pen. So on, it's on my desk and nearly all the times and it's easy to model. It still has like two, three different materials to it simple enough to do, but you generally go through the whole process. So building projects, a tiny projects in the beginning is really, really, really useful. You can of course also follow tutorials on this as well. Follow tutorials on how to build something simple is really useful. Sometimes you just need that, like obviously tutorials are great and following them step by step can also be very, very handy at certain times. But doing simple projects by yourself is it's hard to beat that. If you want to learn a specific workflow as well, I also recommend not really building your own assets from scratch because it just takes a lot of time, to be honest. So let's say you want to learn how to use Substance Painter. You don't have to build a model yourself and uh, throw it into Painter, having to deal with UVs and what if your model screws up and all that kind of stuff. Now you're just in trouble because you, you're spending all your time learning how to model instead of how to texture paint something. What I recommend doing is opening up the samples in Substance Painter, like the meat mat, which is fantastic. It has a bunch of different shapes, it has different texture sets, and in general, it's a very user-friendly asset for beginners to play around with. So if you want to learn smart materials, using curvatures, using whatever it is you want to, how to bake something in Painter, this is a fantastic way to just get started. There is no reason for you to build something from scratch if you just want to learn something specific. Let's say you want to learn generators in Substance Painter. Just load up the default sample scene and just play around with generators. And then you can learn how to export the maps out from there. And then suddenly you're learning how to use generators and export templates as well. I find this to be such a useful way of doing it. 
Oftentimes as well, if it comes to learning a workflow, I'll just keep doing it over and over and over again. Something that a lot of people struggle with is exporting out displaced maps from ZBrush. I mean, rightfully so. That stuff is difficult to do if you don't understand the full process. There are a lot of buttons, lots of different settings to play around with. But if you want to learn that intuitively, you can't just be book smart about it. You can't just understand logically the settings. You have to also just do it. You have to bring in a model into ZBrush. You have to subdivide it, sculpt it a little bit. You need decent UVs. Then you have to go through multiple an exporter, understand the settings, export out a displacement map, and then apply the displacement map in your, in your preferred 3D software. In my case, that's usually Arnold for Maya. And you just have to do that a few times. And then after you've been doing that, then you just get a bit more familiar with that every single time. The reason I think it's so useful to play around with uh, just workflows like that is because when you're doing your real projects, your portfolio pieces, or if you're doing a full commercial piece, like for a studio or freelance job, this is the kind of stuff that you just have to nail. You can't be spending two hours extra just on exporting on displaced maps because you don't know how to do that. You just have to get used to a workflow where this stuff here is just perfectly intuitive, where you're just going through and you can do the job to a high level because the workflow has been solved. The difficult part of any job is usually figuring out how to do the specific job. Let's say you have to sculpt a creature. The difficult part should be finding the references and actually sculpting the creature. Everything around that, like retopology, UVs, exporting out disk maps, all this kind of stuff. This is something you just have to have practiced. This is something that just have to be there. It's a prerequisite. So doing these tests is so, so useful. So for any beginner watching, trying to break through the tutorial hell stage, I really re recommend that you start to just play around with the software. You know, just open it up and just try to build something simple, make a cube, assign some materials to it. Or you can start to try to build something simple that's on your desk. Try to do a Wacom pen, maybe your computer mouse or a bottle or something dead simple, maybe a ring or something like that. Doing like a Lord of the Rings style ring is a good idea. Just doing something simple because then you get to take it through a very simple modeling process, some simple UVs, maybe simple texturing, and you take it through the shader and the rendering and lighting process as well. And maybe even you you export it into Photoshop or a compositor and you get to just do some work on that. I think it's a fantastic idea when you're learning in the beginning to just finish projects. It's not really about making the projects look good in the end. There's a big difference between projects and portfolio pieces. A portfolio piece is something that you put in your portfolio, a very specific website or, you know, old school, like a like an actual physical portfolio that would, you would bring to a studio and show that. Well, a, um, like in order to get a job, but a, a project is something you do to maybe to learn or maybe it's supposed to be a portfolio piece, but it doesn't it doesn't get to that level. But just do tons and tons of projects. You'll learn a lot from that. And even if the current stage isn't good enough, you don't fully understand it, then just try to proceed to, to the next one. Once you start to understand the whole workflow, how everything connects, how the modeling connects to the UV mapping, which connects to the texture, which connects to the shading, which connects to the lighting and rendering, everything becomes so much easier. So when it comes to learning 3D, it's not really about just making all these killer projects in the beginning. You see tons of people doing it online. They're just pumping out awesome projects. But what you're not seeing are the countless projects that they're doing that they're not posting. You are learning one step at a time and every single project you're doing, every single little test you're doing, is improving your understanding just a tiny bit. And just by improving at the margins, a few percent here, a few percent there, you can genuinely improve your overall skills tremendously just just over a few few weeks or a few months. So that's my recommendation to anyone who is stuck in the aforementioned tutorial hell. Play around with software, play around with workflows and just have fun with 3D. Do a lot of Googling, ask tons of people on social media or in Discord channels about the problems you're having. And of course, watch tutorials as well if you get stuck. So that's it for this video. If you are currently struggling in tutorial hell, let us know in the comments how you specifically you're struggling. Maybe we can help you with that. Or if you have successfully exited tutorial hell, let us know as well. I would love to hear how you actually got out of that. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.